everybody, welcome to the Frank and Sandy Show. I'm Frank, and this is Sandy. Say hello, Sandy. Hello. Today we're in Playa Flamingo in Costa Rica, and we're here with Rob and Nadine Pisani. Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. You might know Nadine's book, Happier Than a Billionaire, and the book that followed after it, the sequel. Awesome hysterical books. <laughs> I can't stop laughing every time I read it. And when I say every time, I'm on my third read of your first book, and I just can't stop reading them. They're so funny. Oh, thank uh, you. I think we got a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, you do, because I am your number one fan. Oh, that's, well, that's great. Period. <laughs> no, I mean, thank I don't care if there's other people that says that. We're going to have, have to sit down about that, because I am the number one fan. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and I am just really thrilled we're here number today. Number one fan in the house. Folks. Well, I'm happy. I, I want to know, like, how do you guys like Costa Rica so far? We love it. We've been here multiple times, and uh, every time we come back, it feels more comfortable. And your book helped us really see just how much trouble we could get into and how to stay out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. We appreciate yeah, that. But then you missed out on all the fun, though. Isn't that the fun? Well, yeah. we got to live it through you. Through me. Yeah, that's great. That's even yeah, better. That's great. Because Without all the penalties and prices. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nadine, let me tell you something. My husband isn't one for, like, just outbursts of laughter, but when he read your book, I would hear. <laughs> he couldn't stop snickering in the other See, room, I, reading the whole I, I book. I think I found the formula. It's just write about all the dopey things your husband do. And <laughs> I was going to say, so like, <laughs> you've had a lot of laughs at my expense. I would, I would, uh, you it's, are a, it's almost, a primary character, Rob. You know, Nadine, you're a hysterical writer. You're a prolific. You're becoming a prolific writer. You're, you have more stuff coming. I'm hoping, and I hope we get a little teaser about that. But where would you be with all, all the characters that surface in your world that you get to write about? Well, you know, it's funny because when you move here, you can either have two different attitudes. You can either face things as everything's an obstacle. Cause I moved here. I didn't know the language. We didn't know anything when we came. So you can either look at everything as an obstacle or you could step back and just laugh at everything. Just kind of watch the world go on around you and see what unfolds so i chose the what laughter you mean, is part. it more like laugh at your husband as he goes well, over these <laughs> obstacles is that really as he trips over the obstacles so the, yeah. see my husband is such an optimist he just is the can do kind of guy yeah so in a sense that's great he got us to move here he got all these wonderful stories but you know he just comes up with just the craziest things to do and what else to do but write about it I say Rob is fearless. A a after reading all the things that you guys have done, <laughs> he's plain fearless. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's funny you say that because growing up, I always had a saying. I was like, are people really fearless or just clueless? <laughs> it's like, That's funny. They're just too stupid to know better. It's like, yeah, I'm not afraid because I'm too stupid to know I'm about to get in trouble. It's like, That's hey, right. this is great. Rob, this inflatable kayak has a hole. Don't worry about <laughs> that. that. that Those are th they, they inflate them three different places. So if one side gets a hole, you're okay. You're well, when, you're, when your co-captain is like, hey, I think we're losing air. Can you pass me the coffee? Yeah, you, you think I it's cool. Like, I didn't really panic. Yeah. I thought everything was fine. One of the things you did for the first time that comes to mind is I mean, I mean, your tagline is awesome. Two planes, two airplane tickets, no plan, one dream. Yeah. And you land on the airport runway that first time you're coming here for the permanent time and you're getting off onto the jet bridge or onto the staircase, whatever it may be. When was it the moment that hit you like, oh, yeah, like this is home now? <laughs> When we couldn't get our dog. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much right away. Right, right away, when we got off the plane and, and you know. It's not uh, home without your puppy. Yeah, you know? like, like I mean, that. You get there and then it's like, I, The moment where normal people, they get off the plane, they get their luggage, they get their things, they leave. And when that gentleman came up and said, I have your dog. Oh, so long to get your dog. Oh, so very, very long. And that's when it all flooded. It was like. I am not an American anymore. New rules. <laughs> There's new rules. And it's funny because I'm so clueless that I'm not even sure what he wants. <laughs> so I'm like, my dog, is he alive? Oh, my dog. And Rob reaches in his pocket. Yeah, I, I, I read goes, that. Okay, what do you want? How much you want? Like right away, he just knew what that was all about. And in it swiftly. You know, they got the dog. Everything was okay. And Well, you see, there's a lot of similarities between Brooklyn 
and the third wheel second. <laughs> <from the laughs> I mean, it's more or less, you know, kind of the same, you know. Yeah. I'm always like, what does he want, hon? What does he want? <laughs> <laughs> like money or <laughs> something or a ride or why are you always so, like, I just walk around in this, you know, happy, because I grew up in the suburb, in the suburbia. Yeah. yeah. You know, my... You know, story is just about growing up with a lawn and a sprinkler and, you know, having I was batteries. reading about your sprinkler, that little fan. The little member back then. But I liked like Rob's fire hydrant yes. as his cool off mechanism. <laughs> awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> like <laughs> we did some things. We did We're going to be careful about, you know, doing a spoiler alert for the people who haven't bought the book yet. Uh -oh. We're just giving them some uh -oh. teasers yeah, and some these are motivation and some of the stories that they can read. I mean, Somebody hasn't book. bought the book yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who are they? Who are these people? Uh, and where are they going to hide? Well, all right. One thing I do remember, a memorable moment that must have been over the top, and it seems so in the book, was when CNN called. That was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous and what was funny about it is it's a dream as a writer to get that type of press to get somebody to notice you and I was just petrified <laughs> I was like numb I, I couldn't even function I was so incredibly frightened and it's interesting how so many times in life you're scared you're scared of a lot of things you're scared of failing you know I think this time around I was actually I was scared of success in a way well, and we were also, you know, your first reaction should be, CNN, yay. It was like, this isn't CNN. Well, that's what I wondered is, did you believe it? Guy, like, you know. Yeah, well, you know, you have to, you always take the email, the extension of that email, and you're like, oh, I'm going to punch that in and find out <laughs> if, if they're for real, you know. And then you're always get, you're getting rid of spam. You know, we get rid of spam, delete, 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 delete. And I was just about to delete it. Oh, my gosh. It. And when that came through and the reporter just said she liked my book and wanted to do a story, I mean, I was just petrified. I didn't know what that would mean because I honestly thought that we would sell maybe two books a month and we would take, you know, the $5 and go and have something to eat and that's how we would celebrate. And the, the CNN thing came out a month after the book was published. So it just really was what it took to, you yeah, know. Then it was like, well, maybe, maybe you will actually pay the phone bill every month. Yeah, we were, now we're up in Maybe. things. Oh, pay the electric bill. Well, you know what? Bill. Now it looks like it might cover the electric bill. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> you know, and, and then before the you know it, it was counting like, how many did you sell today? And it's just a couple at first, and then it got bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's like, oh, we can go out to eat now. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was and exciting. now we don't really look at it, and we're not, like, getting rich off of it, but we're making a living off Good of yeah. my wife's book, which is, like, And, you know, it's always not a easy. nice tagline, you know, it's like, see you on CNN. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Do you, you know I was seen on CNN? Yeah. Like, yeah. As <laughs> seen on CNN. Yeah. And the then interview. of course there was everyone with their advice, like, don't use the squeaky voice. <laughs> oh my you know, yeah, you know you, how you I get me, Dean, the Jersey accent. <laughs> Tone it down. When they, Tone it down. When they call to interview me, and you know, you, you ask your family for advice, which is always good because they want to help you. Yes, of course. But there's no filter there, you know? <laughs> so it's always, you don't sound too Jersey. And my sister's like, you better not curse. You better not curse. You better not say a curse. And you don't want to tell somebody that because now in my head, I'm thinking, don't curse, don't curse, don't curse. Right. Gosh, know? or do I curse a lot? Do yeah, I need I to mean, be Am I just yeah. horrible, <laughs> inappropriate person who can't even do it? And now everything too? today is taken in like a, either a political light or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's so many people out. Vanilla. Oh, I yeah. like yeah. puppies. Well, she must be a Democrat. <laughs> and 50 percent of your audience gone. You know. No, and then what, of course how did that happen? She's interviewing me, and of course Rob has to slide me the index cards of things to say. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like well, slide. I used to just stand in the background and go, "Tell her that." <laughs> <laughs> And that never worked. All she would do is like go off camera and go. <laughs> <laughs> never hear what I was saying. Just like shut up, you're confusing me. It was it was one of those things that now I realize it was a blessing, but at the time, you know, it was a little scary to get sure. that type of recognition. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. After being in Costa Rica all this time, I mean, at first it seems kind of part of the atmosphere that the power goes out mm -hmm. every now and then. The water doesn't work for a long time, potentially. <laughs> you know, and that's already happened to us in our last visit here, this one, a couple times. Um, for an hour or two or something like that, the power goes out. So here it is seven years later. And I'm wondering, is it still kind of cute and quaint that it goes along with the atmosphere? <laughs> or is it like, rah, 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 how we got this fixed well, seven years later? It's the duration. <laughs> okay. you know, it's There's times the of both, yeah. The you know, when, when something goes out, I think our immediately thought is, ah, it's coming back on in a minute, in a minute. 
But when it's been three days, you start to question. <laughs> Wait, has it ever been three oh, days? We had nah, um, well, the water. The water was out. The water, yeah. We had oh, an issue wow. with Yeah, and you know, Rob is always like, listen, you know, we have a backyard. Could you use that a facility? I'm like, no! <laughs> no! And he's like, listen, you gotta rough it. These are the things we do, you know, live in paradise. I'm like, no! <laughs> Well, every once in a while, I remind her, I'm like, okay, so you're sitting in your living room, and you're a little warm, and that's a little uncomfortable. And where would you be on a Monday afternoon at 10 in the morning if you were back in yeah. Yeah. Pennsylvania or wherever? What would you I'm be doing like, right, right now? Always like, in the office. Who would you be screaming out at? Yeah, I'd call insurance company. Okay, no water. Go in the bathroom in the backyard. Doesn't sound so bad. Right, so right, bad. right. Then you present it like that. Right. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, so you kind of just roll with it, you know, yeah, like it's I kind of so. a thing of life, you know. Yeah, yeah, I I, yeah you you have it's, to. It's uh, I don't think it's anywhere near the point of uh, deterring us or making us unhappy. You know, it's we're still very happy, and uh, the little curveballs that are thrown our way, I think, in fact, make us more grateful, right? Yeah, when I mean, you yeah. say that, I mean, yeah. like until you've gone a day without water. You don't really understand exactly how important it really is. That was just the experience we had two days ago when the power went out for an hour and a half because it happened at 1.30. It was getting kind of warm and we had the windows open mm -hmm. and we're like, yeah. okay, well, let's go ahead to the air conditioner. It's getting a little warm and sure. bam, the power goes out. Right. And so an hour and a half later, we're baking and then the yeah. air conditioner comes back on. Yeah. And I go, I love you air conditioning. You just broke yourself. You <laughs> the air conditioner. Wow, we're living now. Who invented this? Who invented this? How come we don't know who invented this? We, we, we don't know that person's name. Right. And you, <laughs> Why don't we have a holiday after that person? <laughs> and you rarely get the trifecta where you lose everything. <laughs> right. So you can yeah, always yeah, be grateful trifecta. for something. Yeah, you know? internet, uh, electricity, and uh, water. If uh, they all go at it once. That's a dun-dun-dun. <laughs> are, are you sure they're all three? All three are out? You know, we scramble. We're just like, what do we do? What do we do? She right. was way up in the bed. Like it's always that. interesting when you lose internet or uh, electric for a day or two, and then you then you go back to it, and you, and you go, well, what are, what's going on in the world today? You go, <laughs> it's sort of cool. It's like you're in a time capsule. You, it Wait, all starts there was over. this thing, new invention called a newspaper we might be Yeah, it could buy. be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't need power. Look, it's kind of strange. Look, honey, the Kardashians aren't around anymore. <laughs> How long was that electric out? Well, they go on vacation. Their show got oh. canceled. All right, what happened it's to that? It's great. It's great. It's, it's a funny way to live. And like he said, it doesn't deter us. But I can see why. With some people, it's a little much. It's a little hard for them. But, you know, there's always the flip side of things to be grateful for. And you don't, like you said, you don't realize you're grateful for them until yeah. you lose them for long right. periods of time. So it, it, it just makes us realize why are we here we're here for the experience we're here to have fun we're here to spend time with each other and everything else will just make it work well, if you're gonna be able to live in paradise there are some things that you're just gonna have to be grateful for and not so grateful for but appreciative when it comes back the right way exactly and isn't that just what about being happy is all about Absolutely. I think so I think so I think that's one of the things I learned from the end of your book and I said you know that's right on it's really about learning to what makes you happy in life mm -hmm. And Costa Rica is where you landed to find that, right. and it brought that all out in you. But you did mention, you know, that could have happened to other places mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. And it really was the situation you were in that was making it so difficult. Yeah, I think one important thing that we try to stress is that we, Happier Than a Billionaire, the book, us, we're not, we love Costa Rica, don't get us wrong, but we're not all about Costa Rica. That's not really what the point was. The point was, it's never too late to switch directions in midstream in midlife and just make a complete yeah. change if, if you're happy where you are that's great but maybe you had other ideas as a young man maybe you wanted to be an actor maybe you wanted to be a singer maybe you wanted to be a plumber i don't know but you're never too old to, to take that step and um and everything worked against uh, against us when we were trying to make that right. step and there was no one encouraging us very few said uh -huh. That's a great idea. <laughs> throw your career of 14 years out the window, sell your house at the top of the market, get everything, and just go, you know, because no one thought anything was going to yeah. crash or that oh, there was right. any Even reason. Timing was or, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like the, the, the hair. They thought I was crazy, and it's funny now to hear people talk to me because back then I knew they were crazy, but they would just be like, well, maybe you want to be careful, Rob. You know? <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> now it's worked out five years later, and they're like, dude, I, I, I just didn't get it. I know what you were thinking. Like, I thought maybe we should check you in somewhere, <laughs> have a, like an intervention. You lost your mind. You're throwing your life away. But now you're looking like a market genius. Oh, you live yeah. in paradise. You're yeah, happy as yeah, a yeah, clam. And you know what I also learned? <laughs> you have to nurture it yourself. You know, if you have that dream and there's something you want to accomplish, you cannot count on people around you to support you with that. It right. has to be your own thing. You have to nurture it. You have to believe that it's going to happen. And once I got to that point, see, he was there first. But once I finally got to that point, it's like, oh, no, I need to stop listening to everybody around me and know what's best for us. That's when I was able to be brave enough. Yeah. I used to say to her, you know, well, this one don't think it's a good idea, and that one don't think it's a good idea. I says, isn't she miserable? <laughs> Isn't that one get a divorce? Advice from miserable uh, people. Yeah, this one's divorced. That one's losing yeah, their life. Yeah, that's the name of the know, next book. Don't take advice from miserable people. <laughs> right. That's brilliant. So, well, I'm going to be rich. Don't listen to those people. You, know, if you came to me and said, this wonderful, happy person thinks we're making a mistake, I would say, oh, geez, maybe you're right. But like, every person, they don't think it's a good idea. Oh, well, yeah. you know, we call it the drumbeat of America, you know, yeah. and it beats pretty loud up there to stay the course, mm -hmm. don't change. Don't be flexible. Don't be open to new ideas. Just you've chosen your path. Just stay on it. And just ride it to the but end. But it's interesting. It's not. It's America, but it's also Canada, and I mean, it's the world. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. I'm There's the rat races everywhere. I always <laughs> looked at travel like like being. We're all fish in an aquarium. And you're in this little 10 gallon tank, you know, and then some, there's those fish that swim all around in every crevice. And then there's that sucker that never leaves that little hole. You'd think he only has 10 feet to go. He'd want to know what was on the other end of the tank, but he never does. He stays like that sea anemone and it's, and it's, uh, it's that clownfish and it's sea anemone. It just never, never ventures out. And it's kind of a weird that's thing. A great, that's a great analogy, yeah. actually. Because the world is not that big. No, it's well, really, it's getting it? smaller it's, and you know, smaller, actually. And, um, you know about these great places, and then people say like, "Well, I seen a picture of it on the computer. That's good enough. I just don't understand." Yeah, that. we, we wanna, wanted to see it. We want to see the whole world. Yeah, but, you know, Costa Rica is great. We love it, but I see a future of who yeah. knows what travels may may be. There's one goal for that I want for Rob and I, and it's just happily ever after. So wherever that is, that's what I'll be. That's the perfect mark to be on because a lot of people say, "I want to have." XYZ financially, I want to do this, I want to achieve that, I want to blah, 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 but just, isn't that great to just be happily yeah, ever right. after? And I think that's a what lot you learn in this process. I was one of those guys. We were going to have this style house <laughs> with that style car, and, and you get here and you realize that um, if you don't go with the punches and, and take, take worth the journey where it takes you and go with it, you're going to be one of those people more likely to not be happy right. and not end up making it here. because. Go with the flow. I mean, that's the one thing you have to do. Okay, well, thanks again, guys. Uh, this was great. We enjoyed the whole experience here. But I uh, thank you for coming, and thank you for letting me share my story. And I hope the rest of your trip here in Costa Rica is uh, for Vida. Oh, awesome. awesome. And thank you so much for being here. For Vida. For Vida. Well, thanks again, everybody, for watching. And from Rob, Nadine, Frank, and Sandy, hasta luego. Adios. Adios. That's a little pasta, everybody. <laughs>